And in this video, I want to try to cover line trace single. Now, just like with line trace multi, there's three types. So we have by channel, by object type, and by profile. Now, to start out with, I'm going to cover by channel, just because in my opinion, that's, at least for my uses, that's what I'm commonly using. I have never actually used by profile, and I have occasionally used by object type. Now, to begin, uh, I'm going to go ahead and just try to roughly go over the parameters for you. So kind of what they mean. So we have our hit result. So that's pretty much just when you call this function, if your line trace hits something, you will have this hit result here that gets filled up. Now this is just a big old structure with a lot of information in it. So you would have things like the hit actor, whether or not it was a blocking hit, the distance from the trace start to the location where it was hit, and just all this other stuff in here. Now the second parameter obviously being the start position. So if you look at a piece of paper, you draw a dot, that would be your start, then you draw another dot on the other side of the piece of paper, that would be your end. So you could draw a line between them, and anything inside, if something is inside of that between them, gets hit, then your line trace obviously would have a collision. The next thing being the collision channel. So if I load up, let's go ahead and just uh, create, well, better yet, we can just look through right here. I click on this cube here, go down to collision. And is that something I can easily change right in here? I change to custom. So here we have our collision channels. So for example, trace responses, we have visibility and we have camera. So for, where is it? E collision channel. We can also make custom ones of these, but you're going to filter out, filter out the kind of between these two. So you're going to have your visibility channel, your camera channel, and a bunch of others that come with it. And you kind of also have these as well. So if they are blocking, so let's say we have, we're using the visibility channel. Well, let's say we have a line trace. The line trace hits this object. It goes right through it. Because this visibility channel is set to blocking, that means it will get returned as a hit. So this has now filled out the F hit result with this object's, this cube here's information. Now if we set it to ignore, the line trace would go right through it and it would be as if the object isn't even there. So we can make custom channels as well and that's one thing that we're going to end up doing as well. So next up is just miscellaneous parameters that hold a bunch of different stuff that you can kind of fine tune your conditions so to speak. So the common one is F collision query params. That's what I'll normally use because you use it to ignore like actors. So for example, if I'm right here and I want to press E and send a line trace from my camera right to the object I'm looking at, which would be this cube, that line trace is going to go right through the back of my character. So it's going to hit my character. <clears throat> and we don't want that. We want it to ignore the character. So that's what you would use the F collision query params channel for. Now there's a bunch of different things in there. You can obviously give them a skim through by yourself. And it's kind of the same goes for F collision response params, but that's for a couple of different things. Now let's go ahead and begin. So let's start. Oh, and the return type. So these return booleans. So if there's a blocking hit, it returns true. If there's not, it returns false. So I always wrap mine in an if statement. So if get world line trace single by channel. Now we need our hit result. So F hit result. Hit result. So that's gonna be our first parameter. Then we have should be our start location, but I'm trying to get IntelliSense to pick up. So now we have our start location, so the starting position of the line trace. So let's do F vector because it's a position in our world. Start, and we're going to set that to be our camera component. So get, get follow camera. I'm on the third person template, so that's why it comes up. Uh, get component location. We can pass in start. Now we have the end, so we want the end to be. So this with, it's just with a tiny bit of math. So F vector end, and that's going to be start plus get follow camera, get forward vector. 
times the distance we want the ray to be. So in my case, I want it to go out by 500 units. Now, units in Unreal Engine are centimeters, so this is going to be a 500 centimeter long line. So I'm going to pass an end, and now we have the F collision, or no, the trace channel, sorry. So it would be really great if it would just pop up with the parameters like it's supposed to. So we have the E collision channel, whoops, E collision channel, and this is just an enum, so we would have, as you can see here, camera, destructible, pond, visibility, vehicle, physical body, dynamic, static, all those things. Now, if we take those and we look, those are all of these right here. So we're going to do visibility. Then the next parameter is the collision params. So those are F collision query params. In our case, I want it to ignore our own ourselves. So I'm going to do F collision query params, I just call it params, then because it's a structure, we're just going to do params dot, and here you can see the list of things. So if we, you know, scroll on through, we could say, oh, hey, add ignored actor. Well, we want to do that. We want to ignore our own character. So we're going to add ignored actor, and we're going to pass in this because this refers to our character. So our own character class that we're in, then just pass in params. Now the next one, fill that out, is going to be the F collision response params. Now you can look through this yourself. I have no use for anything in there right now. So I'm going to do F collision response params and just call the constructor. So that way everything is filled out as needed. So as well, I'm going to go ahead and draw a debug line just to uh, so you can visualize it. So draw debug line, get world, start, end f color, red, I think the next one is persistence or false, then uh, I think it's time, so do five seconds, and I have to include draw debug helpers, so to use it, we're just going to include draw debug helpers.h. And that'll fill that out. So draw a debug line. That's just so we can visualize it. So we have our line trace. Let's go ahead and do a compile and just see what happens. Now I have this bound. So when I press F, it calls our perform line trace function. So nothing fancy there. You press F. And I'm not seeing anything. So I think I messed up my draw debug line. Let's see. I never gave it any thickness either. Why are you not showing the parameters? All right, so yeah, lifetime, then where is it? Lifetime, death priority, zero, thickness. Uh, we'll do five again. No, it's E, not F, that's right. So E, and you can see, here's the line trace. Now look up, we have a line trace going right through our character. So now we can interact and hit stuff in the world. So, how do we make use of this line trace? Well, we have everything stored in hit result, so we can just really start going through there. So what we can do is we're going to print out what actor actually gets hit. So let's do, uh, let's see, UE log, log temp, warning, text, hit, actor, percent s, so we can print out a string, then hit result dot get actor, Hit name. Now hit result being a structure, we're not using a pointer. So we use the dot operator to get the actor, in which case get actor is a pointer. So we use the arrow operator to get the name. And we also have to dereference. Actually, I think that's what, I don't know. So the way you print out a string is you just do percent %s. So this is just like using printf in C. It's pretty much the same kind of format. So you can use it that way. Let's go ahead and build and see what we hit. So we should see it out here in this log somewhere. I press E, we hit the floor. Press E, 
we hit the stairs, press E, and we hit this cube. So we keep hitting this cube just fine. Now, because we're using the visibility channel, if I want to ignore it, I can just set the visibility channel right here to ignore. When I run over to it again, I hit the floor, now I press E, and my line traces are not doing anything with the cube right here. But if I look straight down, actually it's probably not tall enough. Let me kind of angle it. As you can see now, I'm hitting the floor, but my line traces are going right into the cube. That's because we are choosing to ignore it, because we are on a specific trace channel. So here's where we can add in custom channels. So if we want to have, you know, something specific, like you can see here they have one for projectile. Do they? Maybe not. I thought they had a, one by default for projectiles. But we go over here to settings, project settings, and they are in here somewhere. Um, I'm just going to search for trace. Yeah, engine, collision. Okay, so we find engine, go to collision, object channels, which are... These guys right here are object responses, and then our trace channels, which are these guys right here, visibility and camera. So what we can do is go to trace channel, new trace channel, and let's give this a name of uh, line trace tutorial. And the default is going to just be blocking. So we set it. Now we can go ahead and save. And if you see, as I clicked away and clicked back, we have this new channel right here called Line Trace Tutorial. Now, the question being, how do we actually use this? So, if we go back to our Line Trace, where we have ECC Visibility, so we're using the Visibility channel, we can do this again, but just kind of scroll down and we can see ECC Engine Trace Channel 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way up to 6. And then if we look at Game Trace Channel, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, and it goes all the way up to 18. Now, if you recall, it says we have a max for trace channels up to 16 or 18 custom channels, including object and trace channels. So between these two, we have a total of 18 channels that we can use. So that indicates us to, well, that tells us that, hey, it's not going to be the engine trace channels because they only have six. It's going to be the game trace channel because that has 18. So in our case, because it's our first one, it's most likely going to be the first game trace channel like that. So we'd use game trace channel one. But if you want to be sure, you can go over to your project, config, open up default engine, and we can look through the collision profile. That actually came right up. That's handy. Uh, scroll down a little bit and you'll eventually find the name. So you can just search for it or like right here is line trace tutorial which was the corresponding name to this trace channel if we go over to the left we can see channel equals ECC game trace channel 1 so that tells us that we are on the right channel so I'm going to go ahead and compile again and we will see that take effect so we currently have it set to blocking so I'm actually going to set it to ignore everything and set just the line trace channel to block it I walk over, I press E, and we're hitting our cube, just like before. Now if I, can I do this live? Click on the cube, change it over to ignore, press E. Oh yeah, cool, I can do that. As you can see, nothing's happening. My line trace, well actually it is interacting with stuff, but it's not hitting the cube at all. It's only going to hit, go away, it's only going to hit the cube if I'm setting this channel that we just created to block. So if I use any other channel, like if I go back to visibility, for example, and build it, this is not going to work because visibility is set to ignore. So I press E, nothing happens, just like before, even though our line trace tutorial channel is set to block. So that's pretty much as detailed of an overview as I think I can really give to um, line trace single by channel. I was expecting to do all three of these in one video, but that didn't happen. I guess I kind of trailed on a little bit, but hopefully that gave you a very good understanding of at least this function. Because we come over here to line trace multi by channel, it is the exact same thing, 
The only thing that differs between line trace multi and line trace single is going to be the output. So if I were to change this, for example, to line trace multi, we're going to get an error, and that's on the hit result. So as you can see here, we cannot have the type T array of F hit result to the type of F hit result. So it's just outputting an array. So instead of being one hit, we can have several, hence the name multi for several, and single meaning one. So if we want to fix that, we just do T array of the type F hit result, just like so. And that allows us to have just an array of them. So it's every hit that it gets that overlaps, because there is going to be some overlapping, and I'll have to go back to that if you uh, notice right here this overlap box that we can select. So I have to there will be more videos regarding that here shortly. But all the ones that it overlaps with are going to get picked up into this hit result. And it's only going to stop once it gets a blocking hit. So this would be useful for things like firearms where you are expecting penetration. So like if you shoot through drywall, you want your bullet to go through it. Or if you're using a line trace, for example, like in this, your line trace, which is going to act as your bullet, to penetrate through the drywall. It's the same kind of deal. So if I, for example, just access the first element, I can compile and we can have the exact same result. We we'll set these all to ignore except for visibility. So we're hitting the first channel. So I press E, we're hitting the cube. Same thing, floor and all that's all the same. Now here's the fun part. I'm kind of dragging on, if I set it to overlap, Actually, I thought it... Oh, right. Heh. That's neat. Uh, I got myself a little bit confused there. Because it's not hitting a blocking hit, this is going to be false. But it would still filter out or fill the hits. So, for example, I'm going to move it out of there and into here just for this example. And that's going to be the end of the video. I just want to give you a brief overview of Light Trace Multi. So now I hit it. As you can see, it hits the cube. Even though it's set to overlap and not block. So that kind of sums pretty much all this up. I can't think of any way to explain it any better, so hopefully I did a good job. Anyways, that's going to be all for this video, and if you like what I'm doing and you want to help support me, you can find a link to my Patreon down in the description below, where I create a Team Deathmatch series just for Unreal Engine, and sorry, with Unreal Engine and C++, just for my Patrons. We cover a bunch of different aspects, such as line traces, obviously, projectiles, custom spawning, weapon customization, and all that fun stuff, as well as servers. Just very basic on the server side. Everything's networked and multiplayer ready. If you have any questions or anything like that, feel free to join my Discord that's also linked down below, and I'll try to help you out. So, take care.